Oh man, how do you lose that, Matt? All right, folks, we went back and we actually got that fish. So to start the episode off with a miss is kind of funny, but this just proves to you that if you go back to a fish, you can catch them. This fish went down deep in the water column and then I waited for it to come back up. And as it came back up, I threw it back on them and bam, hit it strong. So great start to an episode. All right, this is cool. So we're gonna be fishing muddy water. We just got a massive rain in my Southern Illinois area. And I'll tell you right now, all of the back creek channels that I don't typically fish, we're all the way in the back here. And all this water is super dirty, super muddy. And these fish are allowing us to get all the way up on top of them. And so I'm always looking for muddy water, even in the tournament trail. It's the easiest fishing because those fish don't get spooked very easy at all. Now, don't get me wrong. They also, it also means that you have to put it right on their nose and you need obnoxious bait. So I'm looking at black chartreuse, orange heads. So muddy water conditions are great for fishing. Look for it. And yeah, you might have to put it right on their nose, but uh, they allow you to get all the way up there. You can use that 10 footer and all that great stuff. So I'm gonna show you some footage today. We're gonna be catching them in several different locations around my home lake in muddy water, back creek channels. We're actually getting ready for a, a guide trip tomorrow. And so I wanna make sure that we have the locations to go to right off the bat. So thanks for joining. Let's, let's put some fish in the boat, stop talking. So a lot of people ask me like, where do you go to find the fish? And I'm just gonna tell you right now, the, one of the easiest things to do, I always talk about creek channels, I always talk about main lake points, but if you have a muddy water part of your lake, usually it's the back creeks all, you know, feeding these lakes, um, go to those places and sit there and just scan until you find them. Now, I have not fished this area in, I'm just telling you, an incredibly long time. And already had about four fish in the boat. There's a good fish. Right there, solid fish. And we've got another one on the screen. And I don't know what it is. I think these fish move away from the shoreline when these rainy conditions occur because look at this, this is a good fish here. And uh, usually they find them in the middle. So this, these guys right now are right in the center of, he's gonna hit it too, look at this. See how he's getting in his strike position right there? And I can help him out just by pushing it to him. There it is. Good fish too. Bam, good fish. We help them out. Sometimes I will push it right at them. Look at that, good fish. I'll push it right at them. So it makes his, his decision a lot easier. I think a lot of times if you sit there and allow that fish to evaluate what he's about to eat, he'll make the right decision sometimes and you don't want that, so. Right, we got a really good target right here. Real important target. It always gets a little nerve wracking when you know you got a good target coming at you and you wanna make sure you do it right. So I don't screw her up at all with, a, if I feel like I have a bad drop, I am not gonna waste a, a drop on it if I can help it. And that was a bad drop, so we're gonna do it again. We are trying a different color too, which is kind of a little nerve wracking that I'm doing that right now, but here he comes though. I just saw the movement. There it is. There it is, we got him. Big fish big fish look at that that is a big fish <laughs> look at that fish folks that is a that's a two pound fish right there that is big oh that was awesome big mark here Definitely shows up good. There he 
There he is. Mm-mm-mm. Look at that dandy fish right there. Let me show you show you guys something. Show you my setup, all that good stuff. Another tank going in the in the boat. All right. Um, this is the new 10 foot, three pound fishing 10 footer. Um, it will be out in about two months. I can't do anything without that. Th this guy is has been built over years, and um, no joke about that. Sniping braid and the actually the brand new three pound fishing reel. It's not available yet, but it's coming. You guys stay tuned. It's coming. Um, everything meant to be lightweight, flexible, and we got another target on our screen. So anyway, that's the gear, folks. And I only work with top-notch gear and sniping braid and all these products are represented by three pound fishing now. That's there's a reason why. Big fish. Man, this is a slab fest. Look at that. Just inhaled it. I do want to talk about one thing, and that is um, colors. Muddy water, we want something bright, right? We've talked about that. So if you've been watching three pound fishing, you know that I'm all about 30 second ounce jig heads. But during muddy water conditions, I need bright, obnoxious baits. I'm using the brush pile jigs, jig right there. That's obnoxious, something I wouldn't typically ever use in clear water situations for sure. But I'm using a 1 16th ounce, three pound fishing jig head. This guy is absolutely imperative. I've noticed, and I've been fishing these conditions since it rained, that when I use a 30 second ounce jig, I do not get the, the bite hookup. I don't. Um, the bites don't come as easy. I have to put it right on their nose, but the bigger jig head helps. Then bait pop. A lot of times, I don't show it enough, but I will screen on, I will smear it on there to get a feedback from these fish. I don't use it so much for live sonar seeing it because I can pick up my jig when I'm by myself, but I use it as a carrier and I think it's fantastic most of the time. Now, if I can't see my jig, obviously I would be using it for that purpose, but really I love the fact that it's a nice carrier of the original fish formula scent. So let's see if it goes down good here. Let's do it again. All right, good fish here. First drop since talking to you guys, let's see if we can get this guy to react. You know, if I didn't have these muddy water conditions, I probably would consider, here he comes, I would consider my 13 footer. There he is. Because I probably couldn't get as close to him. Finish it. There's the bait pop. But I absolutely love my 10 footer, as we all know. And that's what we're using. Doesn't matter, folks. Just look for the dirty water. All right, guys, I hope you guys appreciate the episode. Muddy water is a great opportunity to get out there and catch some big fish, especially if you're scoping. Just, it's just an absolute blast to do so and uh tell you what the next episodes coming up are probably going to be coming out of millwood 
Arkansas. Looking forward to sharing that with you. The Crappie Masters Elite Series is awesome. I really do like it. And uh, I mean, that's all I'm gonna leave it with. But I mean, great lakes, great opportunity, and uh, thank you the original Fish Formula, obviously, and all the great sponsors. But uh, the new rods, the new reels, all that stuff's gonna be coming. I'm excited about it, spending a lot of time with that. And uh, guide trips are going great. So if you're interested in a guide trip, give me a call, 618-694-5162. Thanks, guys.